this week on Outdoor Bound TV. We will meet Mark Jablonik, formerly of Colby, Wisconsin, who now calls Pewaukee home. Mark is a director with the Northeast Wisconsin chapter of Safari Club International and works as a sales representative with the Safilo Eyewear Company for the past 27 years. His career takes him to all areas of the state during all kinds of weather, but Mark takes a break from his busy schedule to escape the January Wisconsin winter in search of Audad sheep high in the hill country of South Texas. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures, professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. Jerry Goss from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. We'll be right back with some more hunting adventures right after these messages. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. At Colby Chrysler Center, we know you have more important things to do than worry about your car. So let us take care of you. Whether you need routine maintenance or need a major repair, we are not just fixing your car. We are helping you get back to the things that matter to you. When it comes time for a new car, we'll be there, giving you the biggest selection with no pressure or red tape. If you're looking for a used car, know that our stock comes from people we know. People just like you. At Colby Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs Sign and Printing Solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs Sign and Printing Solutions. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm your host, Kurt Walbeck. On this week's show, we're headed to South Texas with Mark Jablonik from Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Now Mark is going to be hunting Audad sheep. Now Audad live high in the desert mountains of the Southwest. The territory is rugged and the plants all have thorns that want to reach out and grab you. It's gonna be a tough hunt, but let's join Mark in Texas right now. Hi, I'm Mark Jablonik from Pewaukee, Wisconsin. A friend of mine from Safari Club International was interested in a uh, uh, Audad sheep hunt that was being offered by the Safari Club chapter uh, based out of Milwaukee. I got a phone call one day saying, how'd you like to go hunting? I said, sure. And I said, where? And they said, Texas. I said, okay, when? And they said, middle of January. I said, okay. And I said, how much is this gonna cost me? And they gave me a figure and I went, all right, what are we hunting? And they said, Audad, okay, what's an Audad? And that's how the hunt came about. The Audad sheep is actually called a Barbary sheep. It's from North Africa. It's an exotic which was introduced to Texas. Uh, what's really unique about these sheep is they've got, uh, uh, you think of a billy goat and you think about the hair that hangs down off of its chin. And they not only have the hair off of the chin, but it comes down off their chest it goes down their legs, they call them chaps, and it finishes down at their hooves, which they call the cuffs. I flew out of Milwaukee to Minneapolis. It was cold that morning. It was uh, zero, maybe a little below zero with the wind chill factor. Flew to Minneapolis to uh, meet up with the three other guys that I was hunting with. 
Um, when we got to Minneapolis, uh, I met them there. We hopped on a flight. We waited three hours on the tarmac for the uh, wings to get de-iced, but we did want those de-iced, and we flew down to San Antonio. We got to San Antonio, collected our rifles. Everything went perfectly. We had no problems with our luggage, guns. Everything came through great. Uh, from there, we um, got a rental vehicle. Uh, we shoehorned everything into the back of it, and we drove uh, four hours south down to Del Rio, Texas, home of the Morning Star Ranch, which is where we're going to hunt the Audad sheep. The ranch in this area of Texas, it's about 20 miles north of the Mexican border, and it is very, very rugged. Uh, it doesn't grow anything but rocks. I'm serious. There, there's no water there. They, they can't get enough water to grow crops. They can't get enough water to graze anything. So really, it's ideal for hunting Audad, which really likes rugged terrain, and there was plenty of it. It was um, wide expanses of, of country, deep ravines, uh, nice little ridges to climb, uh, chucka plants, a lot of thorns, a lot of stuff with thorns on it, and um, very dry. We met some of the other hunters that were in camp. We met some of the guides. We met Edward, who's the uh, ranch manager, and had a real South Texas barbecue. We had Audad burgers, and we sat around the campfire for a couple hours, got to meet some of the other people that were there. We ate, um, and then after that, we turned in relatively early because we had a safety meeting uh, at five o'clock the next morning, which is where we met the rest of the hunters that were in camp the rest of the guys that would be around camp and Edward the uh, camp manager basically let us know uh, how the hunt was handled, where we were going to be, uh, what would be happening throughout the day when they would come and get us, drop us off, that type of thing. Long before daylight we head out in side-by-sides, they've got Polaris Rangers and uh, head out to uh, where we're going to be hunting at. This is an 8,000 acre ranch and they've got 428 miles of roads out on this thing and, and you need them because it's rugged terrain and, and but the roads are in really great shape and they've actually got road signs out there so if you do somehow get yourself turned around you can find your way back. There's actually two ways that they do hunt on this particular ranch. They can put you into an elevated blind or we can also do a spot and stalk. Uh, which is certainly much more challenging. One of the things we noticed right away, there's more than just odd dad sheep on this particular ranch. There are uh, nice whitetails. There's, we easily saw 150 class whitetails every day. Uh, there's access deer, there's fallow deer, there's black buck. There's a number of different things that can be hunted on this particular ranch and they're all very, very challenging because of the terrain. The camp manager, Edward, assigned us to our, our blind for the first day of the hunt. Uh, our guide took us out there uh, to the elevated blind uh, long before uh, daylight. We're set up in an elevated blind on a ranch with 8,000 acres. Came in out of Minneapolis yesterday. It was uh, snowing and about five below when we left. Uh, got here yesterday and it was about 75 degrees and sunny and they're expecting the same thing through most of the week. So we're really looking forward to uh, some good weather here while we're hunting here in Texas. The sun was starting to come up. We could see elk and mule deer off in the distance, and we were waiting for hopefully an Audad to show up at some point in time our first morning. About 10 o'clock in the morning, we met up with our guide who took us back into the ranch for lunch. Uh, after lunch, Lance, uh, a different guide, took us out to our stand uh, for the afternoon hunt. Um, we saw elk, we saw black buck, we saw mouflon sheep, which are also huntable on the ranch. Um, but at the end of the day one, we still had not seen an odd dad that was close enough for us to shoot. We woke up on day two to rain and very thick fog. Uh, they took us out to our stand. It was a different stand on day two. Uh, we waited for the sun to come up, hoping it would burn the fog off. It didn't. There's a couple of shooters out there. It's the first time I've actually seen a live odd day. They're, they're kind of impressive. And there's a couple of shooters out there, but the, the fog is just so thick, we're just not sure what we've got out there. So I have to wait until the fog looks a little bit later on, maybe try it again. Got real lucky 
this morning. We heard some noise out there. And uh, it, was, it was pretty foggy. We got the binoculars out there. And after a couple minutes, we were actually able to make out that there was a herd of odd dad out there. And uh, they've been kind of been milling around out there, grazing for about the last half hour or so. And uh, the fog just keeps coming in and going out. We, we, just, we just can't size them up right. So we're going to have to wait. And hopefully this fog will either blow out or burn off. And try it again a little bit later on. We could hear animals milling about out somewhere out past the stand, but we just couldn't see what they were. When the fog was finally thin enough, or thinning enough, so that we could uh, see the animals, they were all bunched up. Just couldn't get a shot on, on the first morning of day two. And about 10 o'clock, after many hours of glassing, there were no more animals to see. The fog finally burned off. After lunch, we went back out to a different stand this time. It was elevated and we had a very good uh, viewing of a two, couple of different valleys. We saw a number of whitetail. We actually had six different whitetail bucks come in at, at one point in time. We had a real nice 10 point whitetail come in at one point in time as well. Uh, we also had some mouflon sheep come through. And uh, towards the end of the afternoon, as it was just starting to get dark, we had a small band of uh, Audad rams start coming in. One was a possible shooter, but we thought, you know what, we've, we've seen a little bit bigger. We kind of like to hand, hold out for something maybe a little bit different. So uh, we let them walk, and uh, that's pretty much the end of day two on uh, Morningstar Ranch. Visual acuity, enhanced vision, improved shooting, competitive edge, 100% guarantee. Bow Tint Archery Lenses, created by optometrist Dr. Perry Arndt, helping redefine hunting and competitive archery by utilizing tinted optical lens technology to enhance clarity and focus. Dr. Arndt, an avid sportsman, uses tinted lenses in his eyewear to enhance his competitive edge while trap shooting. Bow Tint Scope Lenses are specifically designed to increase focus and clarity. Hi, my name is Perry Arndt and I'm the founder of Bow Tint Lenses. I'm an eye doctor, an optometrist that has been practicing in Wisconsin for 38 years. And I really love my job. But there can be times that my job uh, can be a disadvantage. And actually it's times when, for instance, I'm playing a sport like baseball or maybe shooting a bow or playing golf and I hit a ball out into the woods somewhere. It's very common that people say to me, have you had your eyes checked lately? Well, one of my friends that I was actually shooting with, his name is Tony, and he asked me one day if it was possible to develop a lens that would work in the scopes of bows to improve the ability to see and sight for bow hunters. Well, with my background in optics and tints and anti-glare, I took that challenge and worked on developing a lens that had magnification, certain tints, tints that would, for instance, highlight a target and diminish the background, have an anti-glare and even a corrective curved surface for better optics and less distortion. Bow tint lenses allow archers to improve arrow accuracy, whether hunting or in competition. Bow tint archery lenses. Improve your competitive edge and order today. Here are this week's Outdoor Bound TV viewer photos. Hi, I'm Shannon from Kobe, Wisconsin. If you'd like to see your big buck on Outdoor Bound TV, go to www.outdoorbound.tv, click on the Submit Photo and Video button, and all the instructions are right there. Day three, the last day of my hunt. Uh, they took us out in the Rangers after sunlight this time. 
because we were going to do a spot in stock. Weather's a little bit more clearer today than it was yesterday. Yesterday uh, we had rain early and then it turned to fog and uh, we really had a hard time seeing anything past 100 yards. Sometimes it was less than that. Uh, today it looks like it's going to be uh, blue skies, clear out. Uh, it's about 50 degrees right now and we're going to get up on top and we're going to glass down into the valley and see if we can see where some of those on are bedded down and see if we can't get out and do a little spot and stalking today instead of sitting in one of those elevated stands. We're going to get out and stretch our legs. One thing I've learned about Audad is they are at least as wily as any whitetail I've ever hunted. They have great vision, they have great hearing, and they have a great sense of smell. We got to the top of a ridge and we started glassing the ridges, started glassing the valleys, and you can, you can see a long distance in, in, in every direction here. Uh, we, there's some really, really deep ravines, so we'd, we'd walk 100 yards and we'd, we'd glass the hill all over again. And we'd walk another 100 yards and we'd start glassing down in these little draws and pockets. And uh, we covered quite a bit of territory that day. We probably walked 10 or 12 miles over the tops of those spines, going through uh, chucka plants. There's sawtooth chucka, there's thorn bush. Everything's got a thorn or, or there was prickly pear cactus. Everything had something that wanted to stick you. Day three here on the Morning Star Ranch. We're up on top of them, what they call a a mountain, more of a hill, but it's, it's got some elevation to it. Looking down into these valleys. Beautiful day starting out here. Cool, crisp, bright, clear. Nothing like yesterday. We're going to try and make our way down through this one valley up over the next ridge. Late yesterday, we actually saw two different herds of all dead come in, about 40 from the one side and about 50 or 60 from the other. We're hoping they're still down in that valley. After some extensive glassing, we found a, a shooter ram, and, but they were pretty close to 400 yards out. Uh, we started stalking them, got as close as we possibly could. I didn't feel comfortable with the shot. It was a little longer than what I felt comfortable with. Um, and as we were trying to get a little bit closer to them, we stumbled upon another band of sheep that took off running and started jumping off of cliffs. It was actually kind of wild to watch. Um, but uh, they busted us and we just weren't going to get a shot at that particular group. Uh, we started glassing again and we did find another band of sheep on the backside of that particular ridge. Uh, we started stalking them, but we ran out of cover around 330 yards. Um, there just wasn't anything else for us to, to hide behind, uh, but we kept uh, stalking them. We stayed low. We had to uh, maneuver through some chucka and, and uh, some other plants, but we were finally able to set up and um, get them about 330 to 350 yards across a valley uh, to where we could get a shot. The biggest animal that was in this particular band was in the shade of a tree and we really couldn't tell how big it was, but we were running out of time. It was the last day of the hunt, so we decided that was the animal that we were going to try for. We'd run out of uh, cover, there was no place else to go. We couldn't get any closer than that 330 yards. Um, and I knew it was that range because I took out my, my range finder, ranged it at 330. Some of the sheep were starting to move away. They were out, out around 340, 350. I set up my shooting sticks. The ground was not level. I actually ended up putting one of the shooting sticks on top of my boot, which I've never done before. I practice a lot of shooting. I'm comfortable shooting 300 yards, even 330, 350 I was comfortable doing because I do shoot quite a bit, but I never practiced a shot with my shooting sticks on top of my boot before. At that point in time, we had to decide to, if I could make a 330 yard shot with a 20 to 25 mile an hour crosswind. I wasn't quite sure how to dope that wind, and fortunately for me, about the time I was ready to pull the trigger, the wind died down.
about that sheep. South Texas, third day, hour and a half left in this hunt. Come down in this valley, and there's two different bands down there. We couldn't decide which one was bigger, which one was better. We ranged them. We're working with a really, really tough 20 mile an hour crosswind here. We got really lucky, and we got him. He's down, he's down right over there. We made the shot, the sheep all started running. Uh, after the recoil, I just couldn't tell which sheep was mine anymore because they all started mixing up as they were running through the brush. Um, I had to ask somebody in back of me if I had actually hit, hit it. I suspect that I had, but I wasn't sure because I just didn't see it. Um, I was told that it had piled up somewhere in the brush. Um, so we had to uh, have a couple of high fives, got excited about it, found where it was in the brush with binoculars, and uh, started walking back uh, down one side of the ridge. You kind of lose your distance and depth and perception when you go from one hill to the next hill. Right. You should be in here somewhere. It's not like you're going to find a blood trail. Oh, here is blood trail right here. I got blood. I got, I got him. I got him. Good shot, too. <laughs> there it was, it was piled up underneath a, a brush, and I was pretty excited about it. All right, well, as you can see, we found him. Um, got out this morning, started just getting up to the tops of the these rims up here and glassing down in the canyons and and uh, looking in all these little pockets and we were finding odd dad thing is they're just so far away by the time we got there they were gone then the sun came up started getting really hot out and they all headed for shade it made it a little bit more difficult for us to try and find them uh, but we, we didn't stop we kept climbing and climbing and walking and and uh, I said we got to the top of this canyon rim over here we started looking down and we found one small group and uh, the longer we looked, then we found a couple other small groups. They banded together, and uh, we set up for, uh, for my shot and uh, got out the shooting sticks. And uh, it was a little over 300 yards. Tough shot with a strong wind blowing, but uh, uh, as you can see, I made, a, I made a good shot, and I'm real happy about it, and got my South Texas Saw Dad. Very pretty animal. We've seen them anywhere from kind of a cream color to uh, tan to beige to various shades of brown. Real pretty animal. Typical of the last day of the hunt, all, all of us, everybody in my group tagged out that particular night. This was a hunt of a lifetime for me. I really enjoyed it. It was the first time I've ever hunted Audad. I didn't know what to expect of Audad hunting before I went on this trip. Uh, this was a great trip for me. I really enjoyed it, and I will definitely go Audad hunting again in the future. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs. Sign and printing solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures. Professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. I'm John Kootenay from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and you're watching Outdoor Bound TV, and we'll be right back after these messages. At Colby Chrysler Center, we know you have more important things to do than worry about your car. So let us take care of you. Whether you need routine maintenance or need a major repair, we are not just fixing your car. We are helping you get back to the things that matter to you. When it comes time for a new car, we'll be there, giving you the biggest selection with no pressure or red tape. If you're looking for a used car, know that our stock comes from people we know, people just like you. At Kobe Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Kobe Chrysler. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime.
conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs sign and printing solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Morningstar Ranch is set up to handle a number of different hunters. They've got, got 56 different stands. Uh, they certainly have the housing facilities. Roger Devenport really helped uh, take all the wrinkles out of the entire plan. Everything was set up, everything was ready to go when we got there. There's more than just odd dad sheep on this particular ranch. There are uh, nice whitetails. There's access deer, there's fallow deer, there's black buck. There's a number of different things that can be hunted on this particular ranch and they've got a place where you can actually butcher your animals right there, hang them up. Uh, it's a first class operation. For more information on hunting the Morningstar Ranch in Del Rio, Texas, contact Roger Devonport at the phone number listed on your screen. Hey Mark, that was a great hunt in South Texas. Thanks a lot for taking us along. Folks, join us here again next week when we bring you great hunting and fishing action from around Wisconsin, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. Hi, I'm Mark Jablonik from Pewaukee, Wisconsin, and Outboard, Outboard, Outbound TV, Outdoor Bound, Outdoor Bound TV, okay, and Outboard, Out, <laughs> got an idiot card, and Outdoor Bound TV will be back right here. Mush mouth. Ain't gonna be easy to do. Hi, I'm Mark Jablonik from Pewaukee, Wisconsin, and Outbound, Outdoor Bound TV. Outdoor Bound TV. We'll be right back after these messages. We're out of here.